So this is our video covering our states of matter, so our classification of matter. So we're going to be going through basically um, uh, from the pre-lecture worksheet, it's going to kind of follow that flow chart that you filled out and just kind of talk about those. Um, so basically at the, the hierarchy of our flow chart, we have matter. And matter is basically anything that's going to uh, have mass and occupy space. So things that aren't matter, um, say thoughts or feelings, those don't have mass, they don't occupy space, so we don't they don't fall under this category. Anything that is matter, however, we do separate into uh, two components. We have our pure substances. or mixtures. For our pure substances, these are going to be uh, substances that have fixed ratios. And they're only going to have one type of matter. Another description for our pure substances are they have to be separated by chemical means. Now our mixtures, okay, these are going to have a varying ratio. And they can actually have a varying ratio of two or more, so two plus types of matter. and they can be separated by physical means. So let's stay over and talk about our mixtures. We have two different mixtures that we can have. We have what's called a heterogeneous mixture or we have a homogeneous mixture, or the word is sometimes pronounced homogeneous. For our homogeneous mixture, okay, these are uh, this is going to look uniform in its appearance. Okay. 
So it's basically going to look uh, the same throughout, whereas our heterogeneous mixture, this is not uniform. Okay, so it's going to look different. Some examples, so we kind of know what we're talking about here. For a homogeneous mixture, um, basically, I, I like thinking about Kool-Aid. If we take a packet of Kool-Aid, dump it into a container, add some water, mix it around, uh, once we get that uniform appearance, doesn't change throughout, we have a homogeneous mixture. An example of a heterogeneous mixture, uh, I always like to use trail mix. And basically how we can distinguish between these two is if we were to take a big um, batch of Kool-Aid and a big batch of trail mix and we separated them out, say I had you all in class, we could divvy them out. Each cup of Kool-Aid is going to be the same. Um, for the trail mix, depending on how it's divvied up, you know, each cup is going to get a different amount of peanuts uh, or raisins or chocolate. Uh, my favorite part about trail mix, chocolate, right? So the trail mix doesn't have a uniformity. So when you split it apart into um, chunks, basically, or if you divide that trail mix up, you are going to get a different mixture of each of the components. Okay? That's a heterogeneous mixture uh, description. If you split it up or divide it up into um, equal parts and they're all the same, that's a homogeneous mixture. Okay? Now what makes them mixtures is that they have this varying ratio of two or more types of matter. Okay, so for the trail mix, this is easiest to think about, is it has different components. You have peanuts, you have raisins, chocolate, uh, whatever else you like to have in your trail mix. It has different types of matter. Okay. The other thing that um, makes those both mixtures is that they can be separated by physical means. Trail mix, again, is the easiest uh, to think about, is that if you wanted to separate your peanuts into all peanuts, uh, all raisins, and basically, you know, ignore those and just take all the chocolate out, um, you're separating it just by physical means, by your uh, tweezers, your fingers. Okay. Now, that's uh, one of the main differences of what mixtures versus pure substances are. So we have two different types of pure substances. We have elements, and we have compounds. For our elements, these are basically pure substances that are or contain one type of atom. Compounds are going to contain more than one type of atom. For our elements, okay, examples of our elements, if we have, say, carbon, one of the most common elements. If we have carbon just as a as a solid, that is a single element, okay, one type of atom. Um, so that kind of the formula of that would be C, a capital C. Now sometimes we can have uh, more than one atom in our elements, but only just one type of atom. Um, so an example of that, if we looked at, say, hydrogen, Okay, hydrogen, we'll learn in chapter three, um, doesn't like to be by itself. So it has the symbol of a capital H, but when we find hydrogen in its pure state, when it's just hydrogen, uh, there are actually two atoms of hydrogen um, that are combined together. Okay, but we still call that an element because it's just one type of atom. 
Okay, we, we can have multiple atoms there, but as long as they're the same type, we still classify that as an element. Okay. For a compound, this is where we're going to start combining more than one type of atom. Um, so an example of this, if we had, say, uh, water. Okay, most of you probably know the formula for water is H2O. Okay. So we have two hydrogens and one oxygen in each molecule of water. So we have more than one type of atom. We have oxygen atoms in there and we have hydrogen atoms in there. Okay. So that's how we distinguish between elements versus compounds. Now these are both pure substances in that whenever we find water, Okay, or whenever we find hydrogen or whenever we find carbon, they are always going to be in those ratios. Okay? If we change the ratio, we change the, the pure substance. Uh, in addition to that, they are separated by chemical means, which means if we want to, say, separate the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atoms, we can't just go in with, say, atomically sized tweezers and pluck them apart. That would be physical means. In order to separate them, we would have to intervene by chemical means. So we'd have to go in and put an exorbitant amount of energy into breaking the bonds that hold together the hydrogens and the oxygens. Okay, if we wanted to split apart a hydrogen molecule, same thing, we would have to actually put uh, some chemical energy into that to be able to separate them. So let's practice identifying uh, or classifying our different substances. Let's do an example here. Go ahead and pause the video and try these out on your own. And when you're ready, unpause and I will show you the answers. All right. For this first one, we have ice. Okay, so that's frozen water, water in the solid state. Water is still going to be H2O, whether or not it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So that's going to make this a compound. A blueberry muffin, okay, this is going to be a heterogeneous mixture. One of the ways that I think about that is if you have a blueberry muffin, say one of those gigantic Costco-sized ones, right? You can never eat one of those whole ones. So if you think about cutting it into, say, wedges, um, you can't always necessarily guarantee that each wedge is going to get the exact same number of blueberries, uh, the exact same air pockets in there, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's what makes that a heterogeneous mixture versus a homogeneous mixture. Vitamin A, okay, anytime that you guys see um, this type of thing here, this is called a chemical formula. So basically what it's saying is that we have a fixed ratio in vitamin A of we're going to have 20 carbon atoms for every 30 hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Okay, so anytime that we have a fixed ratio, if we see this chemical formula, okay, that's going to tell us that we have a compound. Oxygen here, we have a, another chemical formula, but it's just of one type of atom, so that's going to be an element. 
for the tea, if you're thinking about um, basically kind of brewed tea is what I would think when I read this word tea, um, I would think of this as a homogeneous mixture okay, or homogeneous. Now, if you took uh, this tea to be the actual tea leaves all ground up together, then that would be a homo or a heterogeneous mixture because you know you have different size of tea leaves, you have maybe a mixture of tea leaves in there. Um, so sometimes these can be an open to interpretation. For our vegetable soup, this would be a heterogeneous mixture. Not every ladle full of soup is going to get the same ratio of potatoes to beans to onions, um, things like that. So we have a, a heterogeneous mixture.